welcome to the first ever episode of Big League Podcast, where I'm your host, 14-year MLB veteran and 2011 All-Star, Matt Joyce. And for some crazy reason, I thought it was a good idea to host my own show, to say whatever crazy thing I wanted, as well as to have some of the biggest names around the game and hear from some of their unique perspectives, their stories, and even some lessons that they learned along the way. So I figured if we're going to do it, we better go big or go home. And to start, we have uh, one of the biggest names around the game, one of the newest LA Dodgers and a former teammate of mine, Tyler Glass now on the show. <laughs> Glass, thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is cool. Your setup's sweet. Got a good crew in here. I'm excited. We got, we got the whole crowd. We got the whole crowd yeah, with is. us. It's dope. It's cool. All the boys are <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. They wanted to come see you. Nice. Uh, obviously excited to have you. So really appreciate you taking some time with us. Yeah. Obviously you recognize the, yeah. the background. It's a good spot. St. <laughs> yeah. Louis. We, we worked hard on this, man. We, yeah. we uh, you know, it's hard wallpaper to be able to put together. It, it was a pain in, a pain in the ass. I'll be honest. It looks um, really nice. So it's paid off. Yeah. Good. Really good. Well, we appreciate yeah, it, man. I want to sure. make it nice for you. So, um, so obviously traded to the Dodgers. I don't think things could have worked out any better for you yeah. right straight yeah. to the dodgers we were talking about in the off season you didn't really know where you were going to go i know you mentioned the cubs um I, what were you, I think there was another team in there wasn't there I think it was a few i always just heard rumors it was like i think the cardinals were in there a little bit i always got like the the hearsay i kind of stayed out of like figuring it out on my own you know but i yeah, always yeah, be yeah. like an, a relative like i heard this rumor and then like obviously talking to my agent but like i think it was kind of a few teams but i'd always heard like la cubs cardinals braves this is quite a few. So I kind of was just like, I'll wait and see until it's like real. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, obviously, again, you can't go wrong with LA Dodgers yeah. and what they're doing over here. You ended up signing an extension, right? It was mm -hmm. a five-year deal. Yeah. 100, 100, can I say this? 137 yeah, sure. million. Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> yeah. dream. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. I mean, so many people, so many kids want to get to that point where you sign, you know, this, this long-term deal worth buku bucks. And so, I mean, my, my first big question is, is like, did you at least celebrate New Year's properly and say, hey, let's, let's, let's throw a massive party and celebrate all the hard work that it took to, to get here? I think it was more like an, like a New Year's excuse. And I always, like on New Year's, I'll do a trip with my friends. And we went to, we went to Mexico, Saudi and had a great time. I did, I guess nothing was really like celebratory specifically to that, but it was, I mean, when it happened, I was obviously extremely excited, um, but nothing like specifically to that. But New Year's itself was like an awesome time. We were there for four days. And anytime you're in a group uh, with like your, your best friends, it's always just so oh, much fun. Blast. So it was yeah, insane. You guys really know fun. about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. So, so uh, you didn't buy like a yacht or anything? I mean, should no. we be doing this podcast <clears throat> on a yacht? No, is that, is that, no yacht purchases. No, uh, yeah, yeah, too much maintenance. That's, that's next season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next season, tune into season two. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The follow up on the, on Tyler Glass now's yacht. No, that would be cool, man. <laughs> yeah. that, those things are too expensive, yeah. man. Those are pain in the butt. Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little boat to go yeah, fishing exactly. on. Exactly. Right? I got one of those. So I got one of those a while yeah. ago. So I do that. That's a yeah, little easier. We're okay with that. Yeah. So um, obviously treated close to to home, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita is where I'm from, yeah. That's where you grew mm -hmm. up, Yeah, right? like 40 minutes north of LA. So 40 minutes away. So yeah. do you have a house over there you're gonna stay with mom during the season or how is this gonna no, work here? So they all, a lot of my family moved away like a few years ago. Okay. I th I'm probably gonna stay somewhere in LA. Like I don't need, I don't know if I'm gonna buy or lease. I went and looked, I couldn't find anything, um, but it might. I might just like rent for the first year and then figure out like what neighborhood I wanna be in. There's so many little pockets in LA. So LA's it'll be good expensive to, too. Yeah, it you is. Know? I so, mean, Tampa's expensive. I don't even know what it is over in LA I know, right it's now. kinda getting like the same same level in certain places. So, but it's, I, I just kinda wanna find like a cool area and some cool neighborhoods and a lot of guys that have played in LA have talked about like buying a house year one and then being like, oh, I found this neighborhood I like more and then selling, you know what I mean? So I'd rather just like not do that, figure it out for a year, kind of drive around and then figure out where I want to go. Yeah, just just nail down the neighborhood is the yeah, biggest right. thing. I mean, the hardest thing for me was like going year to year. Right. And it was like, well, you can't buy a house from yeah. year to year. So it's nice that you have like five years, you know where you're going to be. Exactly. And obviously you can kind of at least start to settle in and, and get familiar with the area, see where you want to live and yeah, right. maybe just rent for the first year and get a lay of the land, right? Exactly. Yeah, because with the Rays, the same thing. Like I always wanted to buy, but I think like the way that their track record was a lot of times you, you go in and out relatively quick. And I ended up staying for like six years, but the whole time I was like, should I buy a house? Should I not? And, yeah. And then I signed the extension with them and it was like, all right, I might as well. Cause I like it in off season. So yeah, it's just so nice to be able to have a place for five years. 
it's, it's very nice to know where you're going to yeah, be. For you sure. Know, the unknown is, is stressful yeah. and you're trying to figure out, you know, people don't realize like in spring training, Hey, I got to go, where am I going to stay in spring training? Yeah. And then a month and a half later, where are you going to live for the season? I got to yeah. rent for six months and then you got to move and all like the logistics is, yeah. is stressful and it's a pain. And obviously yeah. it weighs on like your family and, and sure. girlfriend or wife. Exactly. And, and uh, yeah. it, and it could be a lot. So, um, so yeah, I, I would say just rent for, for the first year and get a lay of the land and yeah. we'll come see you and check things out. There we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll prove it there where you're you at. Go. You know what yeah. I mean? We'll check LA out. Um, so that's cool. So uh, you have a house here in Tampa though. Yeah, I just bought one like a year ago. I did some renovations and those are almost done and I'll move in just in time to leave again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's South Tampa area. I don't, want, a, I don't want to give no, everybody like downtown exactly your, area. Don't say your address. Yeah, okay? In the vicinity of downtown. There's like a couple different spots around that area. But there's like Harbor Island, like Snell Island, all that stuff. It's like in in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's in that general yeah, in there, Tampa yeah. Bay area. Okay? Yeah, there you go. I still get like fan mail yeah. sent to my house. I'm like, what? How yeah. do you know my address? Yeah. You know? Oh my God. So I got to tell you why I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. um, when I was uh, playing for the Ace my first year, I started to be the MC on, on the bus. Oh, nice. Right? And I, I'm sure you've had different MCs yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout, throughout the years. Um, I didn't do it with Pittsburgh, which is, you know, Tyler was coming up with, with the Pirates while I was playing for the Pirates in 16. And, uh, and we had some phenomenal teammates. Yeah. Um, but like, as I became more of a veteran, I felt a little bit more comfortable and obviously could take a little bit more of a leadership role. And so some of the, the, the most fun times that I've ever had were on those bus rides. Yeah. It was like, you know, we would typically go fly to Chicago to play the Cubs or whoever. You would land on the road and then the MC would get on the mic and you would hype the boys up. Yeah. Right. And so for me, I would call up all the rookies and have them sing a song or tell there us a go. joke, mm -hmm. tell us their first sex story, <laughs> right? Yeah. Whatever that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we had a ton of fun and, and uh, we, we could probably get a little bit more into a couple of those stories. <laughs> yeah. in the second half of the show, which uh, we will be working uh, on the Patreon side to get a little bit more edgy stuff and try not to cross the line there. Sure. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I don't know, as far as that's concerned, uh, when you came up, we didn't have MC Guy. So who, who was kind of like the MC for you guys the last few years? Did you have somebody? In Tampa Bay, it was KK. It was always KK. He yeah, would go yeah, on Kier it. Meyer. Yeah, Kiermaier. Yeah, was awesome at it. <clears throat> what a it's stud. a big responsibility too, you know? It's like, it's you gotta a, get up it's there. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and depending on the road trip, sometimes you just wanna chill and do nothing. And it's Depending on the game yeah. that you played. Exactly, yeah, I went can't. over four yeah. with three Ks. I did not wanna get on, exactly. the, on the mic, because yeah. I felt like crap. Yeah, it, I mean, it too, it's probably one of those things where kind of if you can kind of keep it consistent, like whether you're playing good or playing bad, it's, it's nice to have one of those. Sometimes it's the last thing you wanna do, but at the same time, like after you're done doing it you probably feel good but he was great at it when he left it was poche would usually do it okay and he was insanely good at it that dude's like a stunt like a stand-up comic so i mean i agree with you going on the flights and then going on the bus and just doing all that stuff was it's definitely some of the most memorable stuff in baseball for yeah. sure you gotta have a feel you gotta have some oh, feel yeah. too like yeah. if, if you just got crushed you, you got to yeah. be able to like handle it. You know, maybe you don't do it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just got to have a little feel if, if things aren't, uh, didn't go the way you wanted them For to sure. go. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Um, so I want to dive into going back to the Dodgers, right? And traded back, playing back home. You're going to be playing with some of the game's biggest stars. Uh, I, I was looking at the roster just to see, because obviously things change every year and, uh, and it's hard to keep up with nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, I played with Freddie Freeman, okay, who's nice. awesome. The guy's incredible. Yeah, I've heard right? really good things. He's, he's got a really good like sense of humor. Um, he's one of those guys that he's kind of like a freak in the sense that he will sit there in his locker once you start going, right? Like after you get out of like the initial phase of, of opening day and, and the first few games, but he'll sit there in the locker in his, in his uh, sliders <laughs> Until like right before game time, right? And, and with the Braves, he was playing like golden tea. You know, sure, while you're yeah, like yeah, doing, yeah. Pra I'm doing like yeah. extra work. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm lifting in the gym, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready, hit BP on the field. And this guy's like playing golden tea, sitting there in his locker with his sliders. And uh, and then he would go right before the game and he would like roll over some balls in the cage. And he'd be like, oh great, I'm gonna go over today. And then he would go get three hits. Yeah, exactly. Two One doubles. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is bull crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is cheating. Like, yeah. You can't, you can't do that. There's like that fine line too. Yeah, there's dudes who just like, I, you, like you gotta know yourself. Like dude, I have, there's some of the best players I play with that do absolutely nothing. Don't hit on the field and do anything. Go in and three for four, two homers. Like it's insane. It's so and then like, frustrating. But then the guys who do way too much and like, would just hit in the cage 500 times. Yeah, that was probably me. 
Yeah, I think yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, I did too much. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't necessarily overthink it. I think I just like wore myself out. Right. More, yeah, more like that. Like I think too trying to like chase that perfect feeling, and then like over the course of a season, it just gets so. I, there's days you kind of need to do that too, but it, I'm sure the balance is the best. Yeah, yeah. 100. So, so what are you? I when I'm when I was not it's kind of gone through a transition when I was younger it was do way too much all the time like yeah. just try to feel perfect every single day and then as I was going through the raise it was it would be at times do too much and then take a step back and figure it out and then like not do too much and now for me it's it's when I'm feeling good don't don't like press it, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, I get my reps in, okay, good, check out, I'm done. And then the days I'm feeling really bad, I'm good, check out, I'm done. Like go do your mobility and do those stuff that like keep you healthy. But as far as like, so hitters maybe like hitting the cage and you're allowed to, cause, but like pitchers, you can only do so much on a flat ground, you can only do so much on a mound. Mm -hmm. So it's finding like the perfect balance. And I think now it's when it's good, don't do as much and then when it's bad, don't do as much. And then the middle ground, you can kind of like get back to your feeling, but I think, the overall idea of like chasing perfection now is to me is like not real. It's almost like a mental, it's wrong. Like you're never going to feel perfect every day. And some of the games yeah, that I've done sure. the best, I, my warmups are the absolute worst. Yeah. You hear that. It's funny. Yeah, like exactly. in, in the bullpen, yeah. you'll hear guys. I remember talking to Sonny Gray about this all the time. Where he's yeah. like, I had a terrible bullpen and went out and shoved. And you're yeah. like, what? Exactly. And so why would I like expect anything else at, like during the work day? Cause you throw every day in the week and then the times that I'm feeling the worst on the flock, I'm like, Oh, I want to throw more, but it's like, no, just stop, cut it off and then go get it next day. And I think like the, the good and like, it's not such a huge, I feel great this day, I feel bad. It's just kind of like, all right, like you, you know your staples, you know what you have to do and then you just kind of do them. Yeah, man, uh, it's funny because I always tell everybody baseball and playing at that level is really the ultimate roller coaster, right? Right, where you have the highest highs and the lowest lows, and you're doing something at the highest level. You're performing in front of forty thousand fans, and obviously, maybe the game's on the line, a big situation. Like, there's there's really nothing that matches that in in like real world. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's so hard to replicate that. Yeah, and uh, I also I remember when you were with the Pirates, when you were always like off the bench a lot, and you had that like insane. Would you have like fifteen homers and like a some crazy amount of bats, just like yeah. the pinch hit. And then you did that the next year too, but I always remember you'd go into the cage and you had some gnarly routine as well. Like you'd hit off that velo machine like yeah. the whole game and then you get put into the game, which is probably like the best thing you could have possibly done. Cause you're yeah. not playing the whole game, you'd hit on that thing and then you go straight into the game and like third pitch hit a homer. It was yeah. insane. Yeah, like, that was, and that was, <clears throat> you're right. And that was the only way for me to kind of get up to game speed. Right, it was like perfect. Yeah. yeah, and then they started throwing sliders and <laughs> curveballs. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, oh, I, the, the machine isn't throwing those guys. You got to throw the straight yeah, ones. I only like worked it. on the straight yeah. ones. <laughs> Pittsburgh didn't have any fancy machines either. So like, you're getting no curveballs. They, they did have they some did good have machines. It, really? Yeah. Well, then there you yeah. go. Never mind. I'm wrong. Yeah, they did. Uh, they actually had some really good machines, which helped. They had like the slider you know? curveball that one too, like that crazy, the one that would like shape the pitches. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they had that one. I think you had to set it. Oh, okay. And then obviously oh, it would throw sweet. whatever. Okay. Um, but obviously, man, there's it's just nothing like game speed no, and, 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 and like what insane. you guys are throwing up there nowadays yeah. at 97 98 you know with you obviously being freaking sick what are you six eight what are you six seven six yeah, seven. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah six yeah. seven and a half okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. around there, right. <laughs> yeah yeah and and so when i'm facing glass i'm like at the trop and this and i feel like the trop's mound is higher is that that's a, what is everyone that says but they've measured yeah, like, i don't know i think i know that's a, thing. a lot do we'll see away players will go out there with like tape measures and like do all yeah. this crazy stuff but they have like the trackman data and people's stuff always comes back higher too from i love the way that mound feels and toronto always i've heard seems that a lot really pitchers yeah it and feels amazing but they've done like and you have all like the the hawkeye system now where you can like measure everything and it says it's the same, it's like, the same. who knows god man but i don't, I don't know. know there's something to it maybe there's something weird. i felt like i was like this when i was facing you, yeah. you know i was like gosh guys throwing out of the rafters dude. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was insane it's a weird angle for sure oh man yeah you were you were tough to face i mean obviously 98 i was like for me in my mind as a hitter i'm like all right like you have some of the best extension mm -hmm in the game right like you go on a baseball savant you're able to look at some of the statistics and like his reach and like the ball where it releases out of your hand is is some of the best in the game and obviously hey being six seven and a half 
helps, yeah, right? Yeah, no, and, yeah, no doubt. And, and, yeah. and obviously your flexibility and stuff like that. And so like, I was like, man, I gotta be really short, you know, small stride. I gotta be very handsy and just try to like, I was like choked up because your ball has like a ride and cut, which is really unique. Yeah, right. Right, like it takes off, it rides and it cuts into a lefty. And so like not a not a lot of guys have that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, well, how am I, how am I gonna hit this? I gotta push them out over the plate, yeah. right? And obviously if you're constantly wearing me out in, I'm like, ah, you just get jammed. It's yeah. so, so tough to hit. Yeah. And uh, and then you would drop the curveball on three, two. And I was like, this is cheating, dude. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So it sucks so, to be a hitter. You gotta to adjust to, I don't have to adjust to anyone. I can, you know what I mean? It's like, you can have your plan, but as a hitter, it's insane. You got like, the Rays were good at that too. I would come in and then like a sidearm lefty would come in. You're yeah. like, what the, completely what do I do now? different yeah. looks with like the opener too. Too, yeah, right. right they they right, would right. have a guy like Stanek come out throw ninety eight. Yeah, and then they would have a lefty throw in ninety or yeah. eighty nine. You're like, this is yeah, this is cheating. Oh, yeah, this is it's bull crazy. Crap. They're good at that. Dude. So I mean, along those lines, did you feel like um, obviously there's so many analytics around the game, and it got to the point where it was like. You know, before when I first came out, I was like, hey, three, two, challenge them, mm -hmm. right? Throw, you know, uh, attack the zone, fastball, don't walk them. Obviously, I feel like that's changed around mm -hmm. the game. Is that something that the pitching coach and the front office has told you, like, hey, don't worry about walking them, just throw like your nastiest pitch? No, I think it's all dependent on how you feel that day. Like, I think a lot of times if you're like wild and your mechanics are inconsistent and you're not really landing anything, a three, two, you're like, I'm just gonna throw a heater. Depending on the situation, obviously, like you'd rather walk a guy instead of doing, I don't know, like three, two heater count, give up a homer or something like that. But I think at the days that you're throwing strikes and you've landed a lot of stuff early where hitters are respecting all your pitches, that's when you kind of like curveball, slider, whatever. It's an aggressive hitter, you know what I mean? I think for me it's different. Like I can go three, two and get away with it. But I think a lot of times the Rays biggest thing, it was just like throw your best pitch, whatever. Throw Even if a guy is on first base, like just you'll throw your best stuff and you strike another guy out. Like what, who cares? You walk two guys, like you might strike out three. It's kind of like, I think that's what they're good at. They'll find someone, they'll get pitchers who have like an elite outlier pitch and then just be like, throw that right. more down the middle. Cause it's like, no matter where you throw it, it's hard to it's hit. It's hard to hit. Yeah. 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 So um, we actually have a question uh, that was sent to us uh, from, from the, the gallery. Okay. Nice. From, from nice. like uh, social media and Peter Hahn along okay. the same lines asked, uh, what, what was your favorite pitch to throw? And then like, how do you throw it? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say heater just because I've thrown it forever as a kid. You know what I mean? It's like you get the most reps with it, so I have the best feeling with the heater. Um, I, I think my best pitch is definitely my curveball, but the but one I like to throw the most is a heater because I throw it like 50% of the time, and I throw it just. I have like a weird kind of thing. You I got, have, you get some yeah, monster like I, hands, yeah, I, right? Like too big to... hands, so I kind of like have a wider grip. Some guys do it like this, but I'm a, I throw it like a cutter, so I have to kind of I throw it like a football almost. Interesting. So I kind of I just as long as I'm over the top and my spine angle is like vertical, I can just kind of leverage it correctly, and I can just as long as I'm in the strike zone, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, is there somebody that that taught you specifically like how to throw the ball with like ride and cut? No, I was always just done it as a kid. So I've talked about this before too. It started to cut a lot more. I had in high school, my senior year, I had carpal tunnel surgery and I didn't, I caught it like super duper late. And I remember going in the doctor's office and he was like telling me to flex my thumbs and stuff. And I even tell now, like I don't have like a thumb muscle and like everything in here just like shrunk up. So is that like during the season? Like <clears throat> this sometimes? was like senior year. Yeah. No, it's just, I think it was end of junior year and I got to pitch my senior year. So this might've been junior year. Um, and so I, I always remember throwing like a pretty straight fastball. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember just going, I used to play third and I was like throwing stuff uh, uh, from third to first. And I was just throwing cutters. Like I was just missing the first baseman like 10 feet. I'm like, all right, something's not right. I couldn't hold a weight. And I went in, they told me it was carpal tunnel and they fixed it. I did all this rehab. It came back, but like the structural never really came back. I'm a flexible dude, but even yeah. this, like my hands like stuck. Yeah, interesting. And so I just started learning how to throw a cutter. And so like, is that is that like, I remember during the season, I saw you like in the dugout stretching your hand. And no, I just, like, yeah, I was just pitching. Like I've done that my whole life. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, you're, I'm going that yeah, so yeah. much. I'm doing like, you don't stuff. think about no, it. No, I don't even, it's yeah, been yeah. like that since, honestly, yeah. high school, I, I don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. What was the what was the cramping? Was that the same thing? No, that's just, that was like other random spots too. It's just like stuff. being in like a hot place in the middle of a season, like just not, yeah. I don't know, weird like electrolyte things, but I don't know. We I got on the pickle juice grind recently, and it was pickle juice grind. money. <laughs> so I was taking like all these like, advanced. Dude, I love it. Yeah, it's I'm telling you, our team doctor too was like, "Hey, you're doing all this other stuff. Like, just try pickle juice. There's all this like magnesium and all this amazing stuff in it." And then I did it, and it worked. <laughs> I yeah. just sweat like a pig too. So I just have to like consistently drink water and 
take a lot of pickle juice. Kids, <laughs> kids, yeah. Drink pickle your juice. drink your pickle there juice. You My go. daughter loves <laughs> pickles, by the way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's hilarious. So let's go back to to the Dodgers. Obviously, they're they're building a superstar team. They built, spent a billion dollars, mm-hmm. which is insane yeah. to say this yeah. offseason, right? Um, and so Otani obviously is is the biggest name, like that you know two way superstar. Obviously, once in generational talent, this guy's insane, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, I heard that he sent you a video. Yeah. Sent you a video. That's uh-huh. pretty cool. What yeah, you, it was awesome. What, what was the video? In the morning, he was just saying, yeah, like, uh, I hope you sign. I'll be able to, like, join the rotation in a like, year or whatever, 2025. Like, forgot. yeah, 2025. Uh, and I hope to hit a, hit a lot of homers and stuff like that. And it was in Japanese, and the translator had, like, a, a translation. So I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of awesome. That's it was really cool, cool. dude. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Hey, you didn't send me a video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell him too. My video, yeah. dude. No, I'm just kidding. That guy's awesome, man. Um, he ended up. Uh, I'm sure you probably saw this. He saw. He bought Joe Kelly's yeah, wife a insane. Porsche. Yeah, that's cool, bro. You buy somebody's a, a Porsche. Yeah, that's it's insane. For for like, he's good it, for it. It's all right. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. You know, yeah. Seven hundred million. Oh, it'll, be <laughs> yeah. okay. it'll be all right. Um, but that's pretty cool. It was. Just, it was. Uh, she was like campaigning for him, and like he ended up getting his uh, his number, number, right? right. Like yeah, Joe Kelly's yeah. number. 17 or whatever yeah yeah so that's, that's i'll try i don't even I'll think joe kelly asked for anything either right i don't even think he no, he just no, was he like didn't. no yeah, so that's kind of sick that's yeah sick yeah that's show yeah that's cool that's show for sure so my my claim to fame is uh i faced otani in his first start and and obviously he faced us uh, with oakland mm-hmm. and uh and i ended up getting the first hit off of him in the big leagues uh and so i wish i knew how good he was because I would have been like, yeah, hey, let, yeah, me that, exactly. let me get that ball, yeah. you know, yeah, sign yeah, it for yeah, me, exactly. send it over to him. But um, I did it. And so, uh, and then he started throwing his splitter and slider and it was like game over. Maybe like you'll you see him on the, you, you weren't doing the, that guy. the race stuff. You'll see him, have him sign it. If you still have the ball. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I heard he's awesome. I heard yeah. he's nice. I, I haven't met him, but I heard he's the man. No one said anything bad about him. Did you, um, did you face him this year? I faced it, him. Yeah. In 21 and this year at Angel Stadium. Yeah. How'd it go? I struck him out once, and then he hit a. What do you? And, oh, he hit a homer off me in 21. I struck him out in 21, I think, and then I struck him out in 23, and then he hit like the in, most insane. He like capped a ball like 8,000 feet in the air. I remember just being like, "This is the strongest human being I've ever was seen he, in my was life." Was it a homer? Or? <clears throat> no, it was a it was a uh, pop up to left. Uh, but I, it literally like he capped it. I'm like, "All right, sweet, it's a pop up." And I looked up, and it took like three days to come down. So he's massive. He's, He's huge, big, big, big human being. Yeah, yeah. And in he's the box, massive. you see, I don't. You don't really realize how big he is, and you're like, oh, because he's so like proportionate, you know. Yeah. And some guys, it's like the same thing as like Judge, where you see him in the box, and you're same like, thing. What in the world is this human this being? Guy, like, yeah. yeah, they're just like, yeah. like fed, uh, GMOs or something. Yeah, <laughs> nuts, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> like, these guys are monsters. Yeah. They're like you. I mean, on the mountains, the same thing. I'm like, what is this guy eating? Yeah, dude? I'm, I'm, I'm like, standing geez. on the hill. They're just on the flat ground. That's God, what's crazy about it. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a monster. He's fun to watch, man. It's crazy how much like torque he can generate with like no stride i know you know most guys need a massive leg kick right. to like generate the the energy yeah. to be able to like really yeah. create a lot of bat speed so it's it's free yeah he's a free um one of the i don't know if you ever heard the one of the stories uh we're working to like put together a, a program an online program for like high school baseball players just to mm-hmm. like help the next generation and like hey here's what i've learned along the way and uh in otani i don't know if you ever heard the story he, he ended up uh creating like an, a vision board okay did you ever see that no so it's really cool so like in high school he created this vision board of like hey i want to you know play in the big leagues uh and i also you know obviously want to be a pitcher and a hitter and like one of the best of all time so like he created different um, squares of like, all right, mindset, you know, this, I need, this is what I need to work on. How do I get, how do I do this? Right. Um, physical training. Like this is, this is what I need to get into nutrition, all the stuff that we kind of like, yeah. you learn over the, the years, but like, I thought it was pretty cool for him in high school to say, I'm going after it, you know, and, and I'm going to, you know, basically plan everything around that. Yeah. So along those lines, like, was there ever a time when you really started to say, all right, like I want to go after, I want to go, I want to be a big leaguer. I honestly like my whole, I've always had that like obsessive bug in my brain, um, especially with baseball. So I think it was always like a dream of mine since I was a little kid and I was always just like obsessed with playing baseball. And then I think the time I like really made the switch was in high school. So I always would do as much as I could to be good. And then I think once I started like having a full blown routine of like weight room eating, all that stuff started in like, 
high school. Probably sophomore year of high school. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty common. Sophomore, junior year, yeah. Something like that. I feel like that's pretty common. And then I I like played sports all year round as a kid too. So it was always like a physical thing. But I think once it was like a specialized baseball routine, it started around in high school. And then it just like you build it up throughout the years. And And, in a pro ball, it like brings it to another level because it's now your your competing thing you're doing. It's your job. It's like your job. Right. 100%. Uh, And you played growing up, right? Like as a kid. What, like baseball? Or just, yeah, yeah. yeah like, I started when I was like three, and then I did track and field, baseball, football, basketball. But track and field and baseball were my two that I was like most obsessed with. Yeah. Um, I remember my dad when I was like, I think it was 14, 13, 14. So around that same age, sophomore, sophomore year of high school. And my dad took me to the Rays game because the Rays expanded in 98. And uh, and we ended up sitting out there and we were watching the Yankees because mm-hmm. uh, it was his favorite team and, uh, and it was cool because you know sitting in there I'm eating dipping dots I'm looking at I'm taking it all in just just enamored by everything and he's like hey you know that could be you one day out there and I think like painting that that picture and, and establishing like that vision was so important where it was like you know what maybe that could be me out there and so yeah. like it kind of gave me that target that goal to really like consistently work after and so I always thought that was really cool. Um, so along the lines of, of mindset and, and staying there, um, I, you're pretty big in like meditation, right? Yeah, I think like, I, I guess it more of like, I don't know, big, but yeah, generally, like especially within season, like once or twice no, a, a day, like I don't know, just, it, I guess there's like the routine, but it's like built into the routine. I think in season two, how like crazy up and down it is too. It's definitely been something And two, I started in 2015 and have kind of never really stopped. Yeah. There's been time, like you'll go through phases, maybe like the off season to take a little bit of time, but like since 2015 in double A is when, when I was just like spazzing out mentally. I was like, I gotta figure this out. Yeah, I gotta yeah. do something. It's so much stress and, and like yeah, pressure exactly. that there yeah, has yeah. to be some kind of like release or, or woo saw. So right? yeah. Or just like realizing like, I don't know, I think what it did for me and like you said, I don't think it's ever something you just like figure <laughs> out. you always have to do it, but like, yeah, right. right. Yeah. It's like consistent. no matter what it's like, yeah, like I'll always have good headspace and bad headspace. And it's just like accepting the fact that like, I'm going to feel like that all the time in season. Yeah, it's yeah. not, I'm, even like people always talk about like you don't right? ride the roller coaster, but like you, it's not like you can get rid of those thoughts. You just and, have to and, realize and like, this is where I am right now. And I've accept it kind of, you know, like what was, so like going through high school, college, the minor leagues, what was that low point for you? Was there a time where you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I think that happened, I guess, statistically wise in 2017 with the pirates. It was more of like a mental block. It was just so like I would get on the mound and just like, I, I like would literally seize up and I couldn't throw hard. I had so much anxiety. I was worried about everything but pitching and I couldn't really, I kind of, that happened. It was like the closest thing I could feel to the yips. It started in 2016 when I got called up. And then it really didn't kind of go away until like 18. So that was kind of bad. But then I think mentally for me in the minor leagues, even when I was shoving, I always realized like how up and down I was. I knew something had to kind of change, I guess. I was just so like obsessed in, like it's a good thing to be obsessed obviously with baseball. Every baseball player has that like OCD yeah, bug in them. Yeah, you have to be, but right? In order to be I, great. Yeah, I just think I, I leaned into it a little too much and I was so, Everything was about baseball. Every like my routine, I couldn't do this, couldn't have fun. Everything was that to where like when I didn't do well, it was like my life. You know what I mean? I was just like cared way too much about it. Um, did did like having success help that, or did having like a it contract? Matter. It was like it did no. not. No, like th- now it's not necessarily. This is I'm talking about like more when I was like younger in the minor leagues, like yeah. from 2011 to 15. Even when I was shoving, it wasn't really dependent on how well I was doing. It was more like. It, I was just living in between good or bad starts. Like if I had a good start, it was kind of more mellow. If I had a bad start, or even if I have a good start, and then the next day I went out to go throw on the flat ground and I didn't feel right, I was like, oh, I have to feel right. I have to do this. I have to go do drills or weighted ball or something like that. And then I think that turned around after I like fully imploded in the big leagues in 17. Because then I kind of like hit figure like relative rock bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not dying. I'm playing baseball, but like I hit that point. And was just like, all right, something's got to give. And I got sent down to AAA and I was like, all right, I'm going to go like live my life while playing baseball. Like I'm going to go out with my friends. I'm going to have fun. I don't need to stress so much about this being life and death. And then that's when it turned around for me for sure. And then like a bad start's a bad start, whatever, go back, do all the things you have to do and then pitch again. Like, but it wasn't so up and down. It was very much like, this is my routine and I'm going to control the things that I can control. And I think the meditation stuff definitely helped. It took a while to get my wheels under me, but like, I just think it was a mentality shift. Yeah. It's, it's, 
a fine line because obviously you have to have that dedication of working consistently and almost like a little obsessive of right. like, I want to be the best. Yeah. But like you can go to a certain, That's what I mean. a certain yeah. point where you're like overly obsessive yeah. and it causes a lot of anxiety yeah. and stress. You just sure. got to know yourself. Like if you're a guy that doesn't work that hard, you have to figure out how to go that way. And then if you're a guy who obsesses who and works too hard, go the other way. And go like, the other way. It's a nice yeah. little middle ground. Yeah. Let that awareness. Yeah. The self-awareness. So looking back, would there, is there anything that you would do differently? Like, um, you know, obviously I don't know, you know, signing bonus or, or like training wise, obviously, is that something that you looking back, you would do differently now where you would let off the gas pedal a little bit, try to relax and enjoy it. No, because I think I wouldn't have figured like I wouldn't be at the place I'm at now if I had to like it sounds very cliche, but I don't think I would change anything because like doing all that, like doing really well, because I was awesome in the minor leagues statistically. And then I think that all led up to the point of just like the explosion in the big leagues in 16 and 17 of just like, I am not ready for this. And then yep. that insane amount of pressure, especially doing it on like a national scale or like a, on TV was so like heavy for me that like when I did start to change my mentality and then come back, it was like, it's never going to get that bad again. So even when it's at its worst, like throwing terribly in the world series, it's like, I know I'll never get back to that feeling. So it's like, I, this will be fine. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. not the end. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's not the end of exactly. the world. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll one more question mm -hmm. and we're going to wrap this up and, and we're going to go into uh, a little bit more edgy, edgy, your conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, we'll save this for a little bit more exclusive on the Patreon. If you guys are interested in hearing this, uh, check us out on Patreon. Um, well, last question, favorite thing about playing in the big leagues. Mm, I would say just like how I, I get to do that for a living. Like I get to, like we talked about the roller coaster. It's the thing that's the most stressful about baseball, but it's the thing I love the most about it. Cause I would, the alternative I guess would be not playing baseball and like having to do some job that I didn't like or some, you know what I mean? Like having to do something that like, I, I realize how fortunate I am to be able to play a game for a living to where I think the worst thing about baseball is the best thing about baseball. Right. It's like the crazy inconsistency. Of yeah. It all. So I'd say that. Yeah. The stress and, yeah. and the pressure of, of performing yeah. right on the stage. Right. Yeah. I, I might say, uh, either, uh, the feeling that you get, like when you finally connect and, oh, and yeah. you get, that's you know, a great right? answer too. Dude, oh my yeah. God. Or like insane. a show, show, like a seven inning start where you like right. strike out 10, give up no runs. Right. You're on, it's like a drug feeling for like it's a drug. day and a half. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Exactly. It's like the highest high. Yeah. It's, it's insane. insane. Yeah. Um, uh, or show dinners. Those are fun. Too. Show dinners. That's are the a best, good one, dude. Go out to dinner with yeah, the boys after the game, land into a new city. Yeah. Uh, and just be able to to kind of uh, take a break and eat some really good food and yeah. have some good conversations. It's a good so, answer. So cool. All yeah. right. Well, well uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we're gonna switch over and uh, and this will be the end of the show. But uh, stick around. Uh, check us out on Patreon uh, for more additional content. And Glass, thanks for uh, joining us today. Sweet. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.